welcome to Andrew's Arcade, where I show you the many different arcade games in Japan and whether or not you should play them if you come to visit or not. My name's Andrew, and welcome to my arcade. Today's arcade game that we'll be looking at is called Dragon Ball Heroes, which was announced on October 21st, 2010, and released on November 11th, 2010. This game allows the uses of many characters from the Dragon Ball series, as well as characters new to the series. Now, the game has also had a 3DS port called Dragon Ball Heroes Ultimate Missions, Dragon Ball Heroes Ultimate Mission 2, and Dragon Ball Heroes Ultimate Mission X, as well as a manga called Dragon Ball Heroes Victory Mission and Dragon Ball Heroes Charisma Mission. But these were only released in Japan, never to see a stateside release. Now, I'll be going through four different categories to tell you whether or not I can recommend you to come play this game when you come to Japan or not. Number one is presentation of the machine. What does it look like? Is it nice and attractive to look like, or is it something that kind of just shies you away from it? Number two, is the gameplay. I mean, how does the game play? Is it something that's worth your time, or is it something that's simply just mashing a single button and is not fun or presentable at all? Number three, the graphics of the game. Not really one that I'm going to be putting heavy weight into, but it's definitely something that, I mean, is it appeasing to look at? And lastly, number four, is the different game modes. What brings you to come back to this arcade machine over and over again? Is it worth putting extra money into, or is it worth just leaving one time and never playing it again? Now first and foremost, Dragon Ball Heroes is an extremely popular arcade game. It's the number one digital card game in the market. And that's the thing, it's a digital card game. A digital card game known as Card S, and that it's been the best running for 5 years straight, and has distributed over nearly 40 million cards. It's made over 5 billion yen per year starting from 2011, surpassing the total of 40 billion yen. There's more than 3,000 individual cards, and over 1,820,000 players. The 3DS version of the game, Ultimate Mission 1 and 2, sold over 700k copies in total. Now with that said, it's a card-ass game, so you have to collect cards to unlock the characters to play as them. Now, you get to have many different combos and stuff with characters depending on if they work well with each other, and I'll get more into that a little bit later when I show you some gameplay. Now it's time to go into the first point of the four things that I talked about, which is presentation of the machine. And honestly, it looks pretty good. It's very nice and draws many people to the machine with the video playing on the screen as well as the cards displayed on the top that are the current promotional cards in the series. Now, I do have one thing that I'd like to complain about and it's the fact that the machine is too bulky and they never seem to have a chair that's like the right height for you to peer over and play the game. Which to me seems strange because you think their biggest demographic and market target that they're going for is children. But I think that the chairs are just too low and you have to like hunch over and like stretch over to get the whole entire machine. Now, for this next portion of the video, I will be showing you just direct gameplay of one match of Dragon Ball Heroes. And I'll be switching through the second, third, and fourth point, which is gameplay, graphics, and game modes. Now, as you can see here, I've started up the game and I have a character right there. Now, when you first start Dragon Ball Heroes, you get a hero's license. And what you do is you register a character and you're able to create an avatar that is based off of one of the many different races in the Dragon Ball series. You could be something like a Saiyan, or a Saiyan female, or a Frieza race, which is my favorite personally. You can also be Namekians, demons, androids, and I'm sure more to many to come. Now as you see here, I'm starting up the game, and it's about to show up that uh, it's registered my card, it knows that I'm here, um, and here's the different game modes right here. So you have four different types of game modes that you can go through. You have story mission, online battles, card dispensing, and also local battle, which is against the machine that's right next to you. Now, yeah, you can in fact just start dispensing cards from a dispense hole by just putting in more yin until you get maybe a card that you possibly want. Now it's telling me here to remove my hero's license because it has registered my, uh, or identified me. And there's my character, my frost demon right there. And now it's dispensing a card. I get one free card every time you play the game. And after you get your card, you can put in some additional yen coins to get yourself some power up and bonuses. Um, as you can see right there, I actually got uh, that one character from Super. I keep forgetting his name, but it's the rabbit in the survival saga. So like I said here, I'm going to choose the story missions. And it can choose between the current story or some of the past missions. 
Now, I haven't completed nearly as many missions as I should, so I'm doing a lot of, like, the previous stuff. So, I think I'm gonna go right into some of the beginning missions right here. Just selected yes. Um, and you'll spend most of your time probably doing the story missions, as that's what I do. Now here I'm trying to go through the Tournament of Power and I'm trying to defeat one of the enemies here. I'm pretty sure it's uh, like Legendary Super Saiyan, uh, Khalifa, uh, Kale, uh, so Legendary Super Saiyan Kale, uh, the other Saiyan chick that I, yeah, escapes me the name, and then also, um, Oh, I guess not. Oh, no, no, no. I gave up on that one. Here, I'm trying to do the, the God of Destruction from that one universe. And also the like the combination characters. Now, as you see here, I'm putting down one my hero card, which you get to choose between three archetypes. Uh, and that'll change the look of your character. Now, I do like to be the default one. And then you choose your set of a robot that is given to you. Hero from uh, Dragon Ball GT. Now, after you select that... You could put up to six more characters, or depending on the mission. Now I'm putting down Vegeta, and also, I believe, Piccolo, because those are my two trainer characters. Trainer characters are what you need to do, and once your friendship meter goes up with them after every game, you get more and more um, special moves and techniques, uh, even transformations. I think I'm also putting down Frieza level 3, Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, and also Super Saiyan Blue Goku with the Beerus Assist. As well as, I believe that's Super Saiyan for Broly. No, that is not Super Saiyan for Broly. I guess it's just, uh, oh, it's Golden Frieza. It's a Frieza-based form that can actually transform the Golden Frieza mid-battle. Now here I'm selecting my different Jiro type, uh, like, assist. I like to choose the one that shoots missiles, just because uh, I like the extra damage. And then you go into the mission. It takes a little bit to load into. Now here's my characters entering the arena. And as you can see, I could go ahead and comment on some of the graphics. The graphics aren't that awesome. I mean, they're standard for an arcade machine, in my opinion. Um, but it's got that awesome Dragon Ball cell shade look that we've all come to know and love, so I think it fits what game it is. Um, and now we're going to go into the gameplay. So as you can see, it's telling me to move all my things to the back. So the back row is the resting row. There, your characters will gain energy and strength back. Now, as you can see, there's three sections as well. Also here, I'm choosing my assist. It'll randomly do that during the battle. Now, with each line, you get to choose between either going to the very front, which will do the most damage, but they will also take the most damage, the second row, which will do not as much damage, but also not as much health to be taken away from you, and then the very back row, which will be a significant amount of damage um, not taken, but also he's not really contributing much to the battle. I like to do a lot of people in the front, as that does hurt me then, and I do like to keep some people just resting on the back. Mm, I do see I seem to change up some of my uh, tactics right here, but then you press one of the buttons to select and uh, confirm your uh, movements. Right here. Now, as you see, their power level is higher than mine, which means they get to attack first. Now, them attacking first means they get the chance to knock out some of my health or even knock out some of my heroes before they're even to attack. It has the advantage of going first. Now. That means I get to defend, which is delegated by these bars right here, you'll see in a second. Now see? And you press a button that'll end right where you should want to be. Now, if you're higher, you'll successfully, you know, defend. Not like I'm doing right here. And if you don't, you'll actually take some damage as well as possibly give them a chance to do a super attack. It works both ways. So right here, I was not able to successfully defend it. Let's see if I'm able to here. I am. I'm able to defend, so he's not able to get a super attack off, and I don't take as much damage. Now, each of the cards has a HP, attack, and defense. Now, all those get added up depending on what characters that you have on the field. So my total HP right now is what all six or seven of my characters are all together. 
as you see right here, my character actually ran out of HP, so he's actually not going to contribute to this fight. Now it's my turn to attack, and hopefully I'll be able to defeat them. All the attacks also get added together, but that's depending on if you put them into battle in the front or not. Now here I am able to successfully attack. No special attack really goes through, but I'm able to get some decent damage on it. Now I believe it's Vegeta's turn, by himself. Am I able to get it? And yes I am. Sometimes I have a good day, sometimes I have a bad day, and I'm just able to turn it off. And Vegeta also doesn't get to do super attack, and he's not that strong, so not much damage is going through. And also maybe he has extra defense. Now here's my Gyro Ascents hitting out, which uh, just does some additional damage. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how much it does, maybe he levels up. Alright, so now it's my turn to move my characters again, and honestly, I'm not doing too well in this battle. I gotta send my character back to the very back, because he's just out of HP. And I'm trying to decide what I'm gonna do here, and how I'm gonna do, because a lot of my characters don't have a lot of HP. So I'm only able to send maybe three, maybe Vegeta back in, since he's got a little bit more health. Like now, I have a moment here for Frieza to transform. So at, to do that, it shows you what prompt to do. It's different for many characters. So here I just gotta slowly rise the card up and down, and if you do it successfully, you get an extra bonus. Now, this Frieza specifically goes to Frieza Form 3. Now, even with that, I have nowhere near as amount power level as they do. So, they get to attack first once again. And I'm not looking forward to it because he gets to attack. Once again, we have to go through the same situation where we get to have to defend. I seem to not be very good at defending. Oh, he's going to get to do a super attack here too, because he was able to defeat. Um, I don't think I'm going to win this one. I'm very low on HP, and they still got a ton. Once again here, he gets to do a super attack. I think that's actually the battle right there. The game is over when one of the HPs hit zero. And as you can see here, that is mine. So I did not win this battle this time. Now regardless if you win or lose though, you do get experience points and you get scores based on the game. Right here it's giving me my score based on my performance. And I get a certain amount of points at the end. Now it's telling me to pick up my cards. Now the game itself is, is like an RPG, just with cards that you collect and that unlocks the characters. Now as you can see going on here, it's a special like bonus that's going on where I got one of the Dragon Balls. Now once you get all seven, you'll be able to do, well you make a wish like you would in like the Dragon Ball series. Uh, now here it's also doing a little bonus thing where it's rolling around to see if I can get some extra experience or some extra points. I believe it's experience, and I got 30 extra experience, which is not that great. So as you see here, you also get an extra ability for Jiro at the end of every single game. You can edit whichever uh, slot it gives it to you, and also there just shows my experience going up. Uh, I got 240 experience from that battle, plus 10 extra little bonus, and I do level up here. Uh, my relationship, those are the relationship bars that I mentioned earlier, that if they go up, your uh, bond and like some attack with certain characters go up. And if you do it with your trainer characters, they get you special abilities and also transformations. So right here I'm level 9, and it does say here I need to get base form Vegeta and a Piccolo. So you do have to go search out those cards if you want to get the certain abilities for your trainers, but to me, if you go to a book off or something, you can easily find a card that you Now here's an extra bit of gameplay to show a little bit more of what happens when you actually do win. It's not a full game because we did run out of video at the end, uh, it's based on the uh, what we were using. But I will just show you a quick game, uh, we're going to go right into it, and I'll just explain my final thoughts on the game. Now as for number two, like I mentioned with um, gameplay, it is like an RPG and it is pretty standard. 
Um, I think, though, with the many different characters and combinations of cards, it does keep you wanting to come back for more. Because it wants you to collect the cards and get the special bonuses, collect the cards to get the trainers you need to be able to transform and stuff. So I think it ultimately does a good job with the gameplay and the core mechanics of the game to want you to keep coming back to play more. Now, number three with the graphics, I, overall, I do think are good for what they are. Um, they're not the best in the world, but they do have that Dragon Ball feel, which I really, really enjoy. And number four, which is the different game modes, it does have a, uh, standard game modes with the versus modes online or next to the machine with you, or the mini missions. Honestly, the mini missions by themselves should keep you coming back to this game wanting to play more and more and more of Dragon Ball Heroes. It's something that I honestly think is really cool. As you can see, I'm demonstrating pressing the button right there just to make sure you can see what I'm talking about. But yeah, right here you can see uh, I didn't successfully block an attack again against Goten, so I'm getting attacked. But uh, going back to what I said, sorry, a train of thought right there. Ultimately, I do think it's a good game. But do I think it's one that you need to go back to or that you should play if you're just visiting Japan? Mm, not necessarily, no. I think it's a wonderful game, but I live here in Japan. It's a card game, so you're going to need to collect cards as it's one of the main core parts of the game. You need to collect cards just to get what you want and to also do the special attacks or to get the trainers that you need. With that said, if you want to put some time in or you do live in Japan and a Dragon Ball fan, I think it's a wonderful game that you should try out and even continue to play. Things about arcades here in Japan, they're not really meant to be played once. A lot of games have like story modes and things that you're supposed to be playing continuously one after another to get you to come back and play. Arcade games are story and games of their own that America never really did. Now as you can see, um, I'm just going to show the rest of this game, comment on it, and maybe give some extra final things uh, at the very end of this video here. As you see with Piccolo, I did successful attack, so I could do some after image strikes. Um, depending on what is, uh, situations are fulfilled, it will give you different prompts to do different things that uh, you can do to attack or defend. Now the game is in rounds, and I believe it goes up to 7 rounds, and whoever has the most HP by that point wins. I've only gotten to a final round once, but I was able to end it at that point. As you see here, Goku Super Saiyan Blue took a little bit of damage, so I am going to have a rest. And I'm going to have Frieza go up and attack, and also Frost back off a little bit. Actually, two Frieza's. My Frieza level 2, and my Frieza level uh, 1. And here my Frieza is going to, my Frieza level 2 is going to become Frieza level 3 again. Um, now I did believe I did play Frost in front. As you see, I'm trying really hard. I even moved some cards over just to get the right angle. Sometimes these machines get um, scratched up so it's hard to read it. And um, I was not actually successful in that transfer, just so I don't get like a little bonus. Now I actually have more power level here once, for once. So I am able to go first, and hopefully I'll be able to get some good attacks off right here. Ooh, now something special is happening here. When it's happening here, a special card is activated. Now here, it's Frieza. Now this Frieza, I slide left and right, and the higher it goes, the more transformations I'll get to go. Currently, I'm now at ultimate 100% uh, power Frieza. And now if I get through this next one, I'll be able to go Golden Frieza at the very end, plus do a plethora of attacks right Now I was able to hit max, so now you're about to see this awesome super move that Frieza is about to unleash. Starts off... You know, level 3. Transforms to level 3 right here. Gets off some damage on the pan. This is probably by far my favorite card that I own, just because I love this. Goes to ultimate, uh, or final form, 100% power. And finishes it off by going Golden Freezer. When I saw this card in the store, it was a single, and I buy, bought it for about 1,000 yen. Now, a lot of people can say you paid 1,000 yen for one card, but for me, it, it was worth it. Um, Cards can go up to very expensive depending on how rare they are or how important they are. This was one of the promotion cards I made though. So now I have Piccolo and Frost attacking. I wasn't able to simply do it. And like I said, it's not going to show the full battle, but we are going to get most.
and subscribe, and you'll get more information on new videos coming up soon. Have a good evening.